Hey, what is up guys, Sam here, and welcome back to episode 5 of the Discord Bot Coding Tutorial Series. This coding series is brought to you by Salad. Salad is an easy to use application that allows you to earn money while you're not using your computer. Salad uses your computer's graphics card to mine cryptocurrency and allows you to redeem rewards such as Discord Nitro, Visa gift cards, Amazon gift cards, and so much more. Salad is an official Discord partner with a Discord server of over 40,000 members. With almost 900,000 people already using Salad, why not sign up today? Use code TDE2 for two times your earnings for a limited time only. Thank you to Salad for sponsoring this series. So in this episode, we're going to sort of branch out a bit and make the bot a bit more useful because obviously right now it's not too useful having a hello command and a ping command. So we're going to branch it out a bit and try some moderation commands. So I'm going to leave the ping command. We don't need the hello command. So I'm going to make a new command called, let's start with kick. So we can basically copy and paste the previous command and change it to kick. Change this to kick the user. You kick the user provided. So we want to add a user option. And in here, we want the option to be. So basically, you're setting the option in here. So option dot set name uh, person dot set description the person to kick. Okay, so now this command will have an option on it. So what we can do now is we can, let's just test it out. Let's, uh, let's leave this here and uh, you are trying to kick someone. So what we're going to do now is head to our slash register command. And actually we're going to change this a small bit because what's happened is we have delays in the commands. It can take up to an hour for the commands to cache. So we're going to remove this and we're going to head back over to the docs. And we're going to go back and take this in here. So basically, this is a faster way in terms of developing to keep the commands updated. So we're going to have this in here. So basically, it's putting the application, the uh, slash commands onto one server instead of putting them onto all servers. So we're going to need to get the guild ID. So we'll head over to Discord, right click the test server, copy ID, and uh, head back here. Const guild ID equals this. And then we can do that will act as already filled in there actually. So now what happens is they will instantly update. So we head over to Discord and we try slash kick. We'll see instantly it's there. So for now, we're gonna keep it like this for guild. So basically right now the way it's set up will only update the one server you put in here. But once we're finished development and once the bot's ready to go, you can put this right back on and remove this again. And that will update it for every server, but it can take up to an hour. So now that we've that out of the way, our kick command is there. So we can do slash kick and this is options as a person. So let me give it my other account. And it says, you are trying to kick someone. So we had it now. So our kick command is that far. So what we'll do now is we'll head over to the documentation and we'll head to interaction. This book, that's what slash command is. And we can see here we have interaction.member, which will get us the guild member of who ran the command. And we can check their permissions in here, guild member dot permissions. We can do permissions dot has. So what we can do then is basically let permissions equal interaction dot member dot permissions. And we can do if not permissions dot has. So let's make them need manage messages for this one. If they don't have manage messages, return uh, interaction dot reply. So, sorry, dot edit reply and set the content to you don't have the correct permission. So for the sake of testing here, since I obviously have managed messages, oh, messages, sorry. Uh, since I obviously have managed messages, I'll remove the exclamation mark. So this is saying if they have managed messages, say you don't have the correct permission, this is just for testing, obviously. So we'll head back here and I'll try slash kick. You, do, you don't have the correct permission. And if I add back the exclamation mark, so if now it actually works properly, and now I try slash kick, you are trying to kick someone. So we can have now we now have a permission barrier set up for the command. So now people without the correct permissions can't run it. So now our next step would be to get the user from the command. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to head back to index.js, our main file, and we're going to pass in options. 
since we can get then the user or whatever else was passed in through there. So we'll head back over to kick and we'll put options. So the next thing to do is to get the user from the options. So we're going to do let, uh, let's do member equal options dot get member person. So up here, as you can see, we're getting, we're setting a person. So the name of it is person. So we're putting person into here and options is what we just passed through from the main file. So we get options, get member person. So if there's no person provided, then we want to uh, return interaction dot edit reply content. Um, no user provided. So if we head back here and we try slash kick person and then we put in, uh, let's not give a person, sorry. It will say no user provided. So now we actually do the kicking part of it. We'll head over to the docs and documentation and we know we're getting a member through here with our get member. So we're going to look for guild member and we're going to look for kick. So as you can see, we can give an optional reason but we don't need to give a reason, so we'll leave that out for now. So we're going to do uh, user, uh, sorry, member dot kick, and then we're going to do something called dot then. So basically, dot then means if it was successful and the user was kicked, this code will run. So we're going to make a function in here. So as we would do normally, there's nothing to, no information we need to get through here. So we'll leave it as just the parentheses and the and the uh, arrow. And we can do interaction dot edit reply content user and then we can sorry we just back tick since we want to put a user in it so user uh, member dot display name was successfully kicked so what we're doing here is make sure whenever you're using the dollar sign in the bracket and the uh, make sure whenever you're putting a variable into the string you are using back ticks because otherwise it won't work and then you can do dot catch Dot catch basically means if there was an error in running the kick command. So let's for, let's say for example the user didn't give the bot the right permissions. What will happen then is it will run this code here. So we can pull in an error. So instead of pulling in nothing up here, we'll pull in an error here, and we can do console.log error. So log the cons log the error out to the console, and then interaction .edit reply content uh, an unknown error occurred. Okay, and now we can head on back over to Discord and we'll try it out. So we'll do slash kick and then I kick. Actually, let's remove the permissions from the bot first. So I'm going to remove the bot's admin permissions over here. And then I'm going to try to kick. Alt count. As you can see, an unknown error occurred since the bot didn't have the right permissions. But if we head back, as you can, and also you can see as well, it logged the error out, missing permissions to the console. So if we head back now and we give the bot the right permissions, tutorial, permissions, and we add administrator, and then dash kick, and we fill in my alt account. As you can see now, my alt account's gone, user Sam was successfully kicked, and we can even just check the audit logs here, tutorial kicked Sam. So that is how we integrate uh, our kick command. We have the name set for the command with the description, the options, permissions check, we have if they provided a user, and we have the kick. So let's go ahead and let's add a reason now. So let's add string option. So a string is just like uh, like the kick or like kick user provided, these are all strings. Option, set name, reason, set description, uh, reason the user is being kicked. So it's similar down here again, we can do let reason equal options dot get string and we'll put in reason and we'll do if no member or no reason. So these this two um, pipe keys here, I'm pretty sure they're called, that, that means or. So if there's not a member or there's not a reason, we'll just say um, insufficient arguments provided. You can put whatever messages you want in here, whatever different messages you want. So if there's no member or no reason, we'll say insufficient arguments arguments provided. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll kick them, but this time we're going to put the reason into here. So you can put in reason. Actually, no, I think it's, it is just in here, so we'll put the word reason. And then interaction and reply. These are all fine. We'll actually put in here four, and then we can put in reason. Okay, 
So one thing we need to do now, and now that we've edited the command, so we've actually added a reason option, we need to go back to our slash register, I mean to our index, sorry, and we need to add true in here, so it will update the commands for us. Successfully reloaded, we can change, we can move this again, and now it won't update them again until we need it to. Come back over to Discord, kick, and let's do slash kick, and we'll put in person me, and if we press enter, insufficient arguments provided. So now if we do slash kick, and we do, so we're going to put the person as Sam, and the reason we're going to add as um, breaking the rules. As you can see now, user Sam was successfully kicked for breaking the rules, I've disappeared from the server, and the audit log, I have been kicked for reason breaking the rules. And one thing we can do is we can go up here, and we can change these options to dot set, Sorry, that's set required true. So we can make it that these are required for the command because they otherwise they will come up as they are now. They'll say optional. So we'll go back here, change this to true. And then we'll remove it again. And there we go. Now we have our updated slash command. So if we go back here now, slash kick, we'll see person and reason are no longer optional. You now have to define a person and a reason. So it will actually, it says this option is required, specify a value. So that sort of prevents people from doing the, um, an insufficient arguments error or anything like that. So now that we have that in, we can pretty much remove the um, error here because we know that they'll give a member and a reason. So we can leave that removed and this command will now function as it did before, except now with the required fact that they do need to provide um, the user and the reason. So next we'll move on to the ban command, which is going to be very similar, so we can pretty much copy and paste this over, ban.js. And one thing, the only thing we really need to change is, well first we need to change this to ban, change this to ban the user provided. These can pretty much stay the same. Um, we might want to up the permission level to let's say a manage server, I'm oh, sorry, manage guild, not manage server, manage guild. And other than that, we have to change this to ban. And we'll double check that ban has no other uh, requirements. So we'll head over to ban here. We'll head over, sorry, to guild member. And we will go to ban. As you can see, there are options in here. So the number of days to delete the user's messages and the reason. So we're going to go back here. So passing reason in here now won't work because it's multiple options. So we need to pass an object. And in the object, we'll pass the reason to be the reason above. And we will pass the days, the number of days to delete the messages to be seven. So we'll completely delete the user's last week of message history just in case that they'd been acting up and that's the reason they got banned. So now we can go back to our index.js and register our slash commands again. And there we go, reloaded. We can remove this again and restart. And now if we head back here, I'll get my account back on. And we now can do slash ban and the person. So as you can see, it is again, these are all required. I can't leave a blank. So the option is required. So I'm going to pass in uh, breaking the rules. User Sam successfully, I forgot to change that to banned. So we'll head back and change that to banned. But um, that did ban me, in fact. So we'll head over and check here. We'll see. Tutorial banned Sam with the reason breaking the rules. So we can head over to bans and I can unban myself. And there we go. So there's some examples of using moderation commands and setting up your bot to do moderation on your server. So this should make your bot a bit more useful than it was before. <laughs> At least now you can uh, actually use it for moderation. So that's all we're going to be covering for now. We'll cover some more moderation commands and stuff in the future. But that should give you a good introduction to using the docs alongside making your moderation commands. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.